The topic of this CTSNet video is alternative strategies for challenges in venoarterial ECMO cannulation. Most contemporary cardiothoracic surgeons are familiar with VA ECMO cannulation. While central cannulation may be needed in certain scenarios like postcardiotomy shock syndrome, the majority of patients are supported with peripheral cannulation techniques. Complications such as limb ischemia and subsequent threatened limb viability and thrombotic events are not infrequent and are devastating when they occur, but an increasing amount of data suggests that ventricular distension and poor drainage have deleterious effects on a recovering heart. In this series, we will discuss common scenarios where the application of additional venous or arterial cannulae may be necessary and familiarize the surgeon with the techniques to add these cannulae to standard configurations. In this first scenario, our patient is a 46-year-old male who weighs 100 kilograms, is appearing to be in severe cardiogenic shock, and needs to be urgently placed on veno-arterial ECMO via peripheral cannulation. Upon getting access and dilating the vessels, the surgeon is able to place a 19-French arterial cannula in the femoral artery and a 21-French multi-stage venous cannula in the femoral vein. ECMO flow is initiated at 3.5 liters per minute, and the cannulas are sutured in place. After obtaining a series of arterial blood gases within the first couple hours of ECMO initiation, the patient still appears to be acidotic and the lactic continues to rise and the CVP remains elevated. An echo is ordered to assess for cardiac function or tamponade, as well as an ultrasound to check for the presence of a pneumo or pericardial effusion. After examining the echo, the LV appears to be very dilated as well as a distended and full right atrium. There are a multitude of reasons the LV could be distended and the right atrium volume or CVP remain unchanged. In this particular case, it could be that our venous draining is not sufficient. Here we are limited by the size of the cannula we are able to place in the patient's right femoral vein. The cannula is not capable of returning enough of the patient's blood flow through the ECMO circuit, causing a proportionately large amount of blood flow returning to the right atrium. It is also possible that VA ECMO increases LV afterload, especially in the presence of an incompetent aortic valve ultimately leading to LV distension. Truby et al. in 2017 reported that approximately 30% of adult VA ECMO patients had evidence of LV distension. A possible course of action for these patients would be to decompress the LV in some fashion. The solution may be to place another venous cannula in the patient's right internal jugular vein and connect it into the venous side of the ECMO circuit. This would help to decrease the amount of nated blood flow returning to the right atrium by increasing the drainage from the venous vascular system, ultimately increasing the amount of blood flow through the ECMO circuit in sort of a veno-veno arterial fashion. Another solution for a distended LV on ECMO would be to directly vent out the ventricle itself. This could be achieved with either a properly placed impella catheter or a standard LV vent used during cardiopulmonary bypass which could be placed and would need to be integrated into the drainage side of the ECMO circuit. This true LV vent could be placed transapical, transeptal, or by cannulating the right superior pulmonary vein. Standard venous access is obtained in the right internal jugular vein. Using cell digger technique, the vein is sequentially dilated to the size of the venous cannula which will be added to the system. The ECMO flow may be temporarily decreased during dilation of the vessel to avoid entraining air into the circuit. The perfusionist will be prepared for such a scenario through common communication. The entire team will also be prepared for a brief period of separation from the ECMO circuit. This preparation may include titrating inotropes or pressors, adjusting ventilator settings, and ensuring all parties are aware of and ready for this brief separation. The tubing which will be spliced into the circuit may be pre-filled with fluid to decrease this period of separation. The tubing is measured and brought up to the field. At this point, communication with the team is critical as flows will be decreased and then temporarily stopped. Two tubing clamps will be applied to the venous line and the tubing will be cut. Then the Y connector will be added to the tubing after appropriate de-airing. The additional tubing will also be added to the circuit, but will remain clamped. Flows can now be re-established through the circuit while the additional line is brought up towards the head, de-aired, connected to the IJ cannula, 
and then unclamped as well. Our second clinical scenario involves a 42-year-old female who presented with respiratory distress due to a viral cardiomyopathy with pulmonary edema, causing both cardiogenic shock and respiratory failure. This previously healthy female is acidotic and failing conservative therapies to manage her dual organ system failure. She is urgently cannulated in the bilateral femoral vessels with a 19 French arterial cannula with a distal perfusion catheter and a 21 French cannula for venous drainage. Over the next 24 hours, her acidosis and hemodynamics improve, but there is persistent hypoxemia of the upper body. A novel concept of dual circulation exists for peripherally cannulated VA ECMO patients. There is both the fully saturated blood being ejected from the circuit, and in the setting of pulmonary dysfunction, the partially oxygenated blood being pumped from the heart. Sampling of arterial blood gases from both the right and left radial arteries may be useful in determining a deficit between the two dual circulations and in determining the next course of action. The myocardial function determines the location of the so-called mixing cloud. With poor myocardial function, the point may be in the proximal ascending aorta, but as the heart recovers, this point may go down further into the arch and even into the descending aorta. In this case, even though the myocardial dysfunction has recovered somewhat, the pulmonary edema and lung dysfunction persists, leading to poor cerebral and upper extremity saturations. To alleviate this situation, there are several strategies which may be applied. The addition of a second venous drainage cannula, as previously demonstrated, will decrease the amount of blood flow through the heart and the lungs. One may also consider the addition of a second arterial inflow cannula to the right IJ. The technique is identical to the previously demonstrated technique, except that the arterial tubing receives the Y connector and the new IJ cannula is spliced into the arterial side of the circuit rather than the venous. This additional inflow cannula will then increase the oxygenated blood being delivered through the lungs and then ejected by the heart, improving upper body saturations. An LV vent spliced into the system may also help alleviate the deoxygenated blood being ejected by the heart. A percutaneous ventricular assist device like the Impella will be less useful in this case as the blood the device pulls from the LV will still be deoxygenated. Another potential solution would be to transition to VA ECMO with cannulation in the upper body, such as utilizing the axillary artery. Studies have shown that cerebral saturations may be higher when axillary cannulation versus femoral cannulation is used. Peripheral veno-arterial cannulation is a means to support the acutely failing heart with several nuances to be considered. Alternative strategies such as the addition of cannulas for either drainage or increased perfusion must be considered in cases of ventricular distension or poor perfusion to the upper extremities and brain. Alternative cannulation strategies may be adopted by any practicing CT surgeon with collaboration with the perfusion team. A special thanks to the IXL Davis Global Center at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and to Nebraska Methodist Health System.